how can you explain the possibility of a, such a large group as described in the Exodus story actually going out of Egypt? Is that possible? Well, I couldn't explain it. <laughs> Nothing of that shows up in the archaeological or textual record. And uh, one might argue that's a, an argument from silence, admittedly. But nonetheless, uh, we know so much about that period that uh, not to find even a single blip on the radar screen, as it were, um, it, it would be fatal to that theory. Moreover, the biblical account has uh, 600,000 weapon-bearing males leaving, uh, leaving Egypt in the Exodus. That would probably translate into two million souls. Um, can you imagine two million people leaving uh, a country of the size of Egypt, which had only a population of three and a half million at the time? That would have made a huge hole in the, in the social and economic system that certainly would have shown up in the records. It would have resulted almost immediately in a downsizing economically and uh, socially that would certainly have disrupted the empire uh, irreparably. Nothing of that sort is found in the record. Not a thing. I couldn't see the exodus as described in the Bible as occurring in the 13th century. So we're, we're talking about something that isn't quite history, but there are a number of specific geographical terms. Can they give us any clue to when this was written? The geographical clues can, in fact, help to date the person who put this down. That's true. Um, when one does that, uh, one comes up with um, a fairly good impression of what the writer knew and the geography that he was familiar with. And that would help to plug him in, in terms of chronology. When did he live? Yes. When was that time? Well, um, Pithom, as I say, has been identified as the city called Per Atom, the House of Atom. Um, this was built by Pharaoh Nico II uh, around 600 BC, certainly not before 605 BC. Um, uh, that's one item. Uh, going out of Egypt, uh, you have such names as Atom, Pihachirot, Baal Tzaphon, all of these are known from the later geography of Egypt. They weren't around, many of them, in the New Kingdom when the story is supposed to have taken place. I would see the Sayite period, what we call the Sayite, that's the 26th dynasty from 664 to 525 BC, as a period, uh, a kind of an optimal period for, the, um, for the, the, the general background of the story as we have it in Exodus. At any rate, we've limited it to seventh, six centuries before Christ. So, as in our investigation of the patriarchs, both the clues gathered in the field and the texts point in the same direction. Certain stories, including the Exodus, started to be written down in the seventh century BC. Silberman has returned to Megiddo. He is discussing these new elements with Israel Finkelstein. Whatever the possible historical sources that inspired the Exodus saga, the story does not describe the Egypt of the 13th century BC. The investigation of this biblical story once again leads us to the 7th century. What were the reasons for writing down this text at that time? We have to broaden our historical perspective. In the 9th century and during most of the 8th century, Canaan was divided into two kingdoms, Israel and Judah. These kingdoms were located between two of the greatest empires of the Near East. In the south, Egypt, whose power and might we have seen evidence of. Canaan was obviously a strategic area for this immemorial kingdom, which had significant regional ambitions. 